Okay, so before we get into some of the more trickier and intricate problems, I just wanna make sure we're good with the notation. So let's practice notation, let's talk about buzzwords we wanna be looking for, and then we're gonna play out the, the different methods, the Venn, the tree, and the table. All right, so in a particular college class, there are male and female students. Some students have long hair and some students have short hair. Write the symbols for the probabilities of events A through J below, and there's nothing to calculate. All right, I gave you no numbers. All we're gonna do is work on symbols. So I'm gonna give us some letters to start. F is gonna be the event that the student is female. M is gonna be the event that the student is male. S is gonna be the event that the student has short hair. L is gonna be the event that the student has long hair. So let's start to look for buzzwords as we float through this and start to really hunker down on our notation. So the probability that a student does not have long hair. So the first buzzword that's standing out here is probability. Anytime you see the word probability, I want you to think P and there should be some stuff in parentheses. So I'm gonna write capital P and I'm gonna write stuff in parentheses. Okay. So the buzzword that's hanging out in this problem that I'm gonna highlight is the word not. All right. So we have a symbol for not in stats, it's the complement. So when I say does not have long hair, we would be thinking about long hair complement, okay? Now the next step to this would be putting the equal sign and then some number over here. But we're not calculating probability, so I'm just gonna leave that blank. All right, the probability that a student is male or has short hair. So we've got probability, right? So I know I have P and I've got some parentheses. The buzzword in this one is the word or. So let me go highlight or, right? So I want us to start to look for buzzwords that just help us to just hone in on where we need to go in the problem. So this is male or short hair. Great. If I was continuing on this problem, as soon as I hit that right parentheses, I'm gonna put an equal sign and then numbers are gonna go over here. All right, so here we go for part C we've got the probability that a student is female and has long hair. So that probability phrase, right, it's showing up all over the place. And we're in chapter three, so it's always gonna be probabilities. But we've got the word and. So there's my and probability. So let's go with the probability. What were we, female and long hair? Again, if I was continuing on with this problem, I'd have an equal sign here and some numbers. All right, so here we go. The probability that a student is male, given that the student has long hair. So I see probability, okay, P with some stuff, some parentheses. I gotta fill this in with either symbols or words, but the key phrase here is the words given that. So when you hear given that, that's your conditional probability. So you're gonna have your vertical bar, okay? And the condition always gets placed after the vertical bar. The condition in our case is that the student has long hair. So this is not up for grabs. We know the student has long hair. I am selecting a student that has long hair. So out of all the students with long hair, how many are male, right? What's the probability that you are male? So long hair goes after the vertical bar. It is the condition and male goes in front of the vertical bar because I would read this as male given long hair. And I just wanna make sure that we're on the same page and give you other buzzwords that you're gonna run into. Given that is the most direct way to get to the vertical bar, right? That's the, I think the easiest one for us to identify. Sometimes we will hear the phrase of, right? So I might say of the students with long hair, what's the probability that a student is male? Um, other phrases I've heard is if a student has long hair, what is the probability that a student is male? Um, we ran into this, I think it was our chapter one deep dive part one, or I can't remember if it was part one or part two, but we had of the students that were um, living on campus, what was the proportion that um, participated in one or two extracurricular activities. That was a conditional probability that we were calculating way back in chapter one. We just didn't know it. And again, that was on the deep dive. All right, so let's scooch this up. I'm gonna do about two more, and then what I want you to try 
is to pause the video and try and do G through J and then unpause it and come back. So let's try E, right? I see probability, probability the student has long hair and then given that the student is male. So that's one of my, my buzzwords. So let's see, we've got probability. I know I have a vertical bar that's going to go here. What was I given? I was given you were male this time. All right, and then I want the probability that I'm looking at somebody with long hair. And that would be different, right? Given I have long hair, then what's the likelihood you're male? And then given you're male, what's the likelihood you have long hair? All right, so taking a look at this, of all the female students, the probability that a student has short hair. And the buzzword here, even though it's a little bit more subtle, is the word of. That is a condition. It's saying, hey, I don't want to look at all students. I want to limit it to just the female students. So when I go to make my probability symbol, I do have a conditional probability, and the condition is I'm looking only at the females. So of the females, what's the probability you have short hair? Okay. All right, so again, this is where I think it would be a good idea if you're following along on this video. Pause it for a moment. All right, try and do G through I, and then come back and run them with me and see if you got the, the same notation I did. This is just a notation game, right? There's no numbers to calculate. We're gonna do that when we um, start in on example seven. All right, so if I'm looking at example six, I see the word of, uh, example six, example six G, excuse me. I've got of, and I've got probability. All right, so I know I have P and I have a vertical bar. So this is of the students with long hair, what's the probability that you're female? Okay, here I see the probability that a student is female or has long hair. So I'm seeing probability, and then the buzzword that's sticking out to me is or. All right, so we've got probability of female or long hair. All right, the probability that a randomly selected student is male with short hair. All right. So here we go. The one that's standing out is the width. Let's have a quick chat about this. All right, with short hair, this is another word for and. All right, because they need to both happen at the same time, male and short hair. So this is the probability of male and short hair. All right, and then J, it just wants the probability that you're female. All right, so nothing fancy there. There's no buzzwords, there's no ifs, given that, ors, ands. So as we kind of just take a wider lens at this, let me scroll back up and look at this. So here, for L complement, I don't have a formula that directly gets me L complement on here. That would be something I would need to count or use the complement formula. Um, to calculate, and we've talked about the complement formula in here. All right, let me flip back to it so that I can show you what I'm talking about. So again, I talked about the complement rule. So I would somehow use the complement rule if I was calculating a probability like example 6a. All right, if I look at this one for part B, I see the word or. So right away I'm thinking, I'm probably gonna use formula one, all right? And again, we don't know if we're on a Venn tree table counting formula, because I didn't give you any of that. But I just want you to see, anytime you see or, when you think to yourself, okay, I could use formula one, all right? I see and. All right, and is one of those probabilities that are, is very common to these four formulas, but there's no direct way of calculating and using this formula. I'll show you how you do it on a Venn tree table, but you are gonna be responsible for calculating the and. And I'll show you what that looks like. All right, I see over here for D, I see the vertical bar. So I know that I'm gonna be using formula two in some capacity, right? I have a lot of that happening, a lot of vertical bars in here because we wanna practice the conditions. All right, so when we get onto the next page, here's our game plan. All right, next page, we're gonna be on a table and I'm gonna show you what these five formulas play out like on the table problems. And just as importantly, I'm also gonna show you where the and probability lives on a table so you can plug that in to these formulas should you need to.